Hey, Alex Cardinelli here. Thank you for watching this video. Now, I'm about to go live on Chef Cardinelli Cooking Show's Prime Time Baking. And this is going to be my first actual videotaping of my podcast. You know, Christmas is just five days away. And a lot of us are going to be baking some delicious cookies and some delicious Christmas goodies. So tonight, I'm going to give you some great Christmas baking recipes, plus some tips on how to get your kids in the kitchen. So enjoy this great show. Let's get on to the show. Hello, sweet juice lovers. And welcome to a special Christmas 2015 themed primetime baking. I'm your host, Chef Alex Cardinelli. You know, I really love this time of year. Christmas time is special because of all the wonderful Christmas cookies and Christmas baking. I love baking delicious cookies, especially during Christmas time. Tonight, I'm going to give out some awesome cookie and Christmas recipes that you, my listeners, can use at home. Trust me, folks, the recipes I give out are going to be loved by anyone who tastes them. My friends and my family members love my baked goods. With only five days until Christmas, this is the perfect time to get ready to bake. Can you guys believe that Christmas is this Friday? I'm really excited. I'm going to be baking up a storm and baking a lot of cookies over the next few days, and I know that a lot of you, my listeners, are going to do the same. So, listeners, I want you to get your Christmas baking spirit on. Now, the topics I'm going to cover tonight include Christmas desserts that you can make with your kids in the kitchen. I'm also going to provide you with tips for getting your kids involved in the Christmas baking. I'm going to talk about the different kinds of cookies and the cookies that are popular for Christmas. I'll talk about giving out Christmas baked goods as presents and much more. Plus, I've got my delicious Christmas baked good recipes including homemade chocolate chip cookies, peanut butter blossoms, sugar cookies, red velvet cake, peppermint white chocolate cream pie, and other great recipes. Trust me folks, I've got some awesome Christmas cookie and Christmas dessert recipes that all of you, my listeners, can use. Now today's show is being recorded live right here on Blog Talk Radio, so if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to call in. You know, with Christmas being only five days away, this is your last chance to ask any last-minute Christmas cookie or Christmas baking questions. Call in at 1-347-989-8142. Or you could also call in and share any of your favorite Christmas cookies or Christmas baked goods recipes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am ready to begin this awesome prime time baking. But first, we're going to take our three-minute introduction for the American Variety Network. But don't go anywhere. Prime time baking, Christmas cookies, and Christmas baking recipes starts right after our new short American Variety Network introduction. All right, 
ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and start the 2015 Prime Time Baking Christmas Special. And we're going to start by talking about what Chef Alex Cardinelli is making this Christmas. You know, every Christmas I have the distinct honor of making the desserts for Christmas. Each Christmas I make the desserts and all of the Christmas cookies. And that started uh, quite a few years ago. Probably I'd say in 2008 or 2009 is when I first started making the Christmas desserts and all of the Christmas cookies. And it's one of my favorite things to do in the whole year. I love the holidays because I love to bake. So I learned how to make most of my Christmas cookies and desserts from my great-grandmother, my grandmother, and my uh, mother, as well as going to culinary school as well. I think I prefer Christmas baking and baking in general over cooking sometimes, but I love them all. But anyways, here is what I am making this Christmas. I am making a white chocolate peppermint pie. You know, Thanksgiving I made a plain white chocolate cream pie and it was phenomenal. I love the white chocolate cream pie. But for Christmas, I'm going to up a notch. I'm going to make a white chocolate peppermint cream pie. One of the things people think about when they think about December and Christmas season is peppermint. And peppermint complements white chocolate. Peppermint and white chocolate taste awesome together. So I'm going to make a white chocolate peppermint cream pie. And it really is a simple cream pie to make. And it is really delicious. I'm also going to be making a homemade red velvet cake. Now I love making red velvet cake on Christmas for a few reasons. But the major reason being red. Red is a color of Christmas, and a red velvet cake has the dark red cake with the beautiful white frosting, and I think that complements the cake very well. And red velvet is a combination of chocolate cake and vanilla cake uh, colored red, so all of my guests are going to enjoy this cake. It's going to be nice and moist because of the addition of buttermilk. I really do dig red velvet cake and it goes great with a nice cream cheese frosting. Now on top of the white chocolate peppermint cream pie and the homemade red velvet cake, I'm going to be making a lot of delicious cookies. It would not be Christmas baking season without making homemade cookies. So, I'm going to make the classic American cookie, chocolate chip cookies, I'm going to be making M&M cookies, I'm going to be making sugar cookies, and I'm going to make a classic traditional Christmas cookie known as a peanut butter blossom, which is a peanut butter cookie that has a Hershey kiss or some sort of a candy in the middle. Now you can use Reese's miniatures or Snickers miniatures or Twix miniatures. You don't just have to use Kisses. But really a peanut butter blossom is just a peanut butter cookie with a candy in the middle. And I'm also going to be making oatmeal raisin cookies. So I have a lot of cookies that I'm going to be making this year. Now I'm also going to make Italian cookies with my mother for Christmas. Italian cookies are those that are decorated with either lemon icing or anus icing and it has sprinkles on top and it is really really good. Alright so that's all the stuff that I am making this Christmas. Now I'm going to start my Christmas baking a few days early. I'm probably going to start on Monday or Tuesday of this coming week. So that way I can get everything done and relax on Christmas Eve and enjoy 
Christmas. Now, I want to give you guys a good talk on why you should be using homemade cookie dough this Christmas. Now, I know a lot of you, my listeners, are probably going to be using store-bought cookie dough. I know that is really convenient, especially when you are on a or or in a time crunch. But I really am a big advocate of making homemade. You should do everything homemade as often as you can. Now, I think the store-bought cookie doughs are okay. Uh, I do I use them sometimes when I have to for like a cookie dough cheesecake, but really Christmas time you should be doing homemade cookies. Because when you're doing homemade, it shows that you are baking with love and you're putting your heart and soul into baking. Now, I really, really, really push people to do homemade cookies during the Christmas season. You don't have to be the best baker in the world. It's not that difficult to make homemade cookies. All you've got to do is follow directions, read the recipe word for word, and follow what it says, and know how to measure. And I'm sure all of you, my listeners, can do that. Now, the reason I am such a huge advocate for homemade cookies is that a lot of those store-bought cookie doughs have all these unnatural chemicals in them to prevent you from getting sick and to keep the cookie dough self or shelf stable longer and i'm not a big fan of chemicals and baked goods so really you should uh only consider making homemade cookies during christmas now if you are in a time crunch you can probably get away with it but I recommend using homemade cookies for Christmas. Hopefully you understood my little rant there about the store-bought cookie dough. I see a lot of people buying store-bought cookie dough today at Walmart. Hopefully more of you will be doing homemade cookies. Alright, so now I want to talk about why I love Christmas baking. For me, it's fun. I think baking during the Christmas season is fun. I really enjoy going in the kitchen and making some awesome goodies to give out to people and to enjoy. Now, I like to watch Christmas movies and listen to Christmas music while having a glass of hot cocoa and a delicious cookie. Now, it also feels good to give baked goods as presents. Now, when I was in school, I used to give baked goods to my teachers as presents. I used to give them homemade M&M cookies, and I used to give them chocolate chip cookies and things of that nature. And they were very thankful, and I can tell that they liked the uh, presents that they got, they liked the cookies that they got. Now really, when you are giving out baked goods as presents, you are saving yourselves a lot of money because you're not going to spend a lot of money on a present. Some presents, as we know, can be very expensive. I mean, sure, you're buying the ingredients and stuff, but you are getting large quantities of cookies when you bake, and you can gift these cookies to several people. Let's say, for example, your recipe makes about three or four dozen cookies. You can easily give about 10 people a bag of cookies with that recipe. Another reason I love Christmas baking so much is the memories that it creates. You know, I still have a lot of memories that all come back to Christmas baking. Matter of fact, I learned to bake from Christmas time because I used to go into the kitchen when my grandmother, great grandmother, and mother were making cookies, and I would scoop out some cookie dough and I'd help them make cookie dough. So I remember much of my childhood 
The week of Christmas was all cookie baking and making a lot of goodies. So I have a lot of wonderful Christmas memories and they all have to do with Christmas baking. So I'm sure that a lot of you are also going to have Christmas memories out there and it's great. I think it's great getting in the kitchen and baking. So I thought that that would be a fun way to start our show before we get a little bit of informal right here on primetime baking. So now I want to talk about Christmas baking with your kids. I think it's a good idea to get your children involved in the holiday baking because it will create memories of the Christmas holiday and it'll also teach them how to be a good baker like it taught me. So here's my tips for baking with kids this holiday season. Be prepared. Set out as much as possible ahead of time. Now if you know you're making cookies, cover the table with wax paper. Get the cookie cutters out. Have everything ready because when you're dealing with a toddler, you won't have an extra hand to look for extra flour, get another egg, or wipe up spills. This is why it's very important to measure your ingredients before you start baking. So when you know you're going to make chocolate chip cookies, for example, you should follow the recipe to the exact measurements and the exact directions. All right, because it really is important to keep a very, very good eye, uh, uh, a very good eye on uh, how much you, uh, 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 the recipe calls for ingredient wise really really important so you got to keep a close eye on that kind of stuff so this is why mise en place is important all right so that's the first tip have all your ingredients measured and ready to go my next tip is to let them use the mixer and other appliances there's nothing like the thrill of watching a stand mixer go round and round and round. Just keep their little fingers away from the spinning paddle. Let them turn the mixer on and off and show them how the eggs increase in volume as you beat them. My next tip is to let them do it themselves. Make an extra cake and let them decorate it from top to bottom. Let them cut out cookies and scrape them up without worrying too much about how they look. You want your kids to have as much fun as you when they are baking in the kitchen. The next and final tip is to strap them in. I know it sounds pretty damn strange. I know that, but I find it's really helpful to put smaller children in the high chair or booster seat when doing crafts and making cookies. Then they have an extra tray of their own to roll out dough and play with sprinkles. If you're lucky, most of it will stay on the tray and you will not have to clean it on the floor later because we know that kids make big messes. So those are my tips for baking with the kids in the kitchen this holiday season. Now, I want to talk to you about things kids can make in the kitchen for Christmas. One of the most obvious things that kids can make in the kitchen for Christmas this year are cookies. Now, there are a wide variety of cookies out there that are kid-friendly to make. A lot of kids love them. So, I really recommend setting up what I like to call a cookie station. The first station would be a drop cookie station where you and your grandmother and one of your kids can make cookies like chocolate chip cookies, M&M cookies, peanut butter cookies. These are all cookies that you would use a cookie scoop for. 
Then I would have the second and final cookie station. And this would be your rolled out cookie dough. Like cookie dough that you would need to roll out like a sugar cookie or a gingerbread man. These are the cookies that you would create fancy shapes with. Like Santa's, Christmas trees, or Christmas bells, or gingerbread men. And I think those are the most fun for a kid. And then I'd have a decorating station or a, a decoration station where you could have your royal icing for your gingerbread men or your sugar cookie. And you could have your sprinkles, your M&Ms, and everything you're going to decorate your cookies with. And then decorate the cookies and bake them and frost them. You know, it really is good to be organized and prepared when you are in the kitchen to prevent any burning of the cookies or any accidental uh, over mixing. What I mean by that is you should have stations like the rolled cookie dough to make sure people are scooping and uh, measuring the cookies accurately. Or excuse me, I just saw uh, confused that whole statement there. Sorry about that. I, I mean to say it really is important to have your cookie stations organized so you've got your roll you've got your scooped cookie dough and you've got your rolled cookie dough and that way you have everyone doing everything and it's really important to keep an eye on the time that the cookies are in the oven now you could also make cupcakes and cakes during christmas season and get the same idea with the decorating. Now you can also do white chocolate bark for the holiday season. I think the white chocolate bark is really good. And you can also make chocolate candies during the holiday season. I know a lot of kids love to make homemade lollipops, like the white chocolate lollipops and stuff. And I know some people from elementary school, their parents made homemade white chocolate lollipop stuff. So it's fun making homemade candy for Christmas as well. So moving on to my next topic, and that's going to be popular cookies for Christmas. You know, I was thinking about all of the popular cookies that come to mind when we think of Christmas. The first one is obviously the gingerbread men. These are by far the most popular cookies during Christmas in my opinion. Every bakery has them and every kid wants to make gingerbread men. The next popular cookie is sugar cookies. Now, sugar cookies are very versatile because you can make a drop cookie or you can roll them out and make some fun shapes for Christmas with a sugar cookie. The next popular cookie for Christmas is a thumbprint cookie. Now, this is a sugar cookie with some sort of filling in the middle of the cookie. Now, the filling could be jam, like raspberry jam, grape jam or strawberry jam or it could be peanut butter or it could be caramel or chocolate sauce but it really is good i like a chocolate cookie with peanut butter in the middle that's good now as we discussed earlier in the show peanut butter blossoms are really good during christmas uh, peanut butter blossoms are a peanut butter cookie with a candy in the middle, as I discussed earlier in the show. Snickerdoodles are extremely popular during the Christmas season, and a snickerdoodle is a sugar cookie with cinnamon sugar mixed with it and rolled in. The sugar cookie is rolled in the cinnamon sugar mixture. Chocolate snowball cookies are extremely popular during the Christmas season. Uh, basically, a chocolate snowball cookie is a chocolate snow a chocolate cookie rolled in powdered sugar, and that is very good. And last but not least, chocolate chip cookies are popular during the Christmas season. I think that the chocolate chip cookies are loved by everyone and 
I have yet to meet and yet to meet anyone that does not like chocolate chip cookies. I think everyone in America loves chocolate chip cookies. Now, speaking of cookies, I am a big fan of the Christmas movie Jingle All the Way. And there is a scene where Arnold Schwarzenegger and the neighbor next door yell at each other for cookies. Cookies are yummy, and I would like to hear this clip one more time. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I really, uh, really love that movie jingle all the way. All right, our last topic before I start to give out my wonderful Christmas cookies and baked good recipes are Christmas baked goods as presents. Now, I know the economy can be rough on a lot of people, but if you are experiencing financial difficulties, you could give baked goods as presents. I know a lot of people do it, I do it, and I really enjoy it. There are a lot of things you can give out as presents for baked goods. Some of the examples you can give out include cookies. You can give out a whole assortment of flavors. I would suggest doing at least two or three flavors per bag. I would probably um, do chocolate chip, M&M, sugar, and peanut butter. But do be aware that some people have allergies to peanut butter. And if you know this person has an allergy, do not give them the food that they are allergic to. Now, I really recommend white chocolate peppermint bark. That is a really popular candy and convention this time of year. It really is good. Now, a white chocolate peppermint bark is really white chocolate with pieces of broken up uh, peppermint in it. And it's allowed to harden and you break it in half and it is really good. Brownies and cupcakes also make for great uh, Christmas baked good presents. Now, what is the good of giving baked goods as gifts? Well, it is really affordable. A person is going to love it, and they're going to enjoy it, and they're going to savor the deliciousness. And it is fun to actually get in the kitchen and bake up a storm. Alright, so what a great start to our show. Well... We're going to go ahead and take our one and only intermission here on Primetime Baking. But coming up next, I've got some wonderful Christmas cookie and Christmas dessert recipes, including chocolate chip cookies, sugar cookies, gingerbread men, M&M cookies, red velvet cake, and white chocolate peppermint cream pie. All of those delicious Christmas recipes are coming up right after this wonderful intermission. We're going to hear a couple of Christmas songs followed by our commercials. And when we come back, it will be recipe time live right here on Primetime Baking. So don't go anywhere, my wonderful listeners. We'll be right back after this awesome intermission. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Christmas 2015 Primetime Baking Show, live right here on the Chef Cardinelli Cooking Show, exclusively on American Variety Network. Now, before our wonderful Christmas music commercial break, I discussed what I am making for Christmas cookies and desserts this year. I also discussed some tips 
for getting kids involved in the kitchen and making some great Christmas cookies and Christmas desserts and some other great stuff. And now we're getting ready to give out some wonderful Christmas cookie recipes and Christmas dessert recipes. But before I do that, I'd like to remind any of my live listeners out there that you can call in at one 347-989-8142 with any last minute Christmas baking questions or to share your very own Christmas cookie and Christmas dessert recipes. Ladies and gentlemen, the call in number again is 1-347-989-8142. Alright folks, it's that favorite time of our prime time baking show. You guys know what time it is? I think you guys do. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, it's recipe time, live, right here, on the Christmas edition of Primetime Baking. So, I'm going to give you the recipes right here on the show, and then I'm also going to post them on my Facebook group. So, you should really go check out my Facebook group and get these recipes. I'm going to post them on Monday morning on my Facebook group, Chef Alex's Recipe Vault. That is where you can get these great recipes. Alright, so my first recipe is for the classic American favorite, chocolate chip cookies. So here is Chef Alex's chocolate chip cookies. You will need one cup of butter, softened, one cup of white sugar, one cup of packed brown sugar, two eggs, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, a teaspoon of baking soda, two teaspoons of hot water, a half teaspoon of salt, and two cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Cream together the butter, white sugar, and brown sugar until smooth. Beat in the eggs one at a time, then stir in the vanilla. Dissolve the baking soda in hot water. Add to batter along with salt. Stir in flour, chocolate chips, and nuts if we use nuts. I left out nuts in my ingredient list because I don't use nuts in my chocolate chip cookies. Drop by a large spoonful onto ungreased pans. Bake for about 10 minutes in the preheated oven or until edges are nicely browned. My next recipe is for the best and easiest sugar cookies in the world. Chef Alex's Easy Sugar Cookies. Two and three fourths cups of all-purpose flour. One teaspoon of baking soda, a half teaspoon of baking powder, one cup of butter softened, one and a half cups of white sugar, one egg, one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit in a small bowl. Stir together flour, baking soda, and baking powder. Set aside. In a large bowl, cream together the butter and sugar until smooth. Beat in the egg and vanilla. Gradually blend in the dry ingredients. Roll rounded teaspoonfuls of dough into balls and place onto ungreased cookie sheets. Bake 8 to 10 minutes in the preheated oven or until golden. Let stand on cookie sheets 2 minutes before moving to cool on wire racks. 
Now, my next recipe is a childhood favorite, as I always remember making these as a kid during Christmas, and that is Chef Alex's M&M Cookies. For these, you will need one cup of packed brown sugar, a half cup of white sugar, a cup of shortening, two eggs, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract, two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of salt, and one and a half cups of M&Ms. In a large bowl, mix sugar, eggs, shortening, and vanilla thoroughly. Add flour, salt, and baking soda to your creamed mixture. Blend well. Add three-fourths of a cup of the M&Ms. Drop dough by teaspoonful onto baking sheet. Slightly push a few candies on top of each dough ball with remaining candies. Bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 9 to 11 minutes. And now on to one of the most popular Christmas cookie recipes. The Hershey's Peanut Butter Blossom Recipe. It's the recipe that I use. So, Chef Alex's Peanut Butter Blossom Recipe. You will need 48 Hershey Kisses, a half cup of shortening, three-fourths cup of Reese's Creamy Peanut Butter, a third cup of granulated sugar, a third cup of packed light brown sugar, one egg, two tablespoons of milk, a tablespoon of vanilla extract, a cup and a half of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of baking soda, a half teaspoon of salt, and a third of a cup additional granulated sugar for rolling. And I made a mistake, it is one teaspoon of vanilla extract, not a full tablespoon. So heat in your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Remove the wrappers from the Hershey Kisses. And you could also use Reese's, Snickers, Twix, any miniature candy of your liking. Be shortening in peanut butter in a large bowl until well blended. Add your sugar and your brown sugar. Beat until fluffy. Add egg, milk, and vanilla and beat well. Stir together flour, baking soda, and salt and gradually beat into peanut butter mixture. Shape dough into one inch balls. Roll in gra granulated sugar if desired and place on ungreased cookie sheet. Bake 8 to 10 minutes or until lightly browned. Immediately press a chocolate into the center of each cookie. Cookie will crack around the edges. Remove from cookie sheets to wire rack. Cool completely and it makes about 48 cookies. Now, one of my personal favorite cookie recipes that was a secret until this year's show. Chef Alex's Reese's Pieces Cookies. You're going to need a half of a cup of butter, soften, and that's one stick of butter. You'll need a half cup of granulated sugar, a half cup of packed light brown sugar, a half cup of Reese's Creamy Peanut Butter, one egg, a half teaspoon of vanilla extract, a cup of all-purpose flour, a half teaspoon of baking soda, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and one cup of Reese's Pieces candies. Heat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Beat your butter, granulated sugar, brown sugar, peanut butter, egg, and vanilla in a large bowl until fluffy. Stir together flour, baking soda, and salt, and gradually add to the butter mixture, beating until well blended. Stir in candies. Drop by heaping teaspoons onto ungreased cookie sheets. Bake 10 to 12 minutes or until edges are lightly browned. Remove from oven. Cool slightly and remove from pan to wire rack. Cool completely and this makes about 30 cookies. Alright, so on to a recipe that kids are going to like. Gingerbread men. The last time I made gingerbread men was five years ago. And I did not plan to make them this year so I didn't get the ingredients. But this is the gingerbread men recipe that I've been using. And it is really good. So, Chef Alex's Gingerbread Men. One 3.5 ounce package 
of cook and serve butterscotch pudding mix, a half cup of butter, a half cup of packed brown sugar, one egg, one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, a half teaspoon of baking soda, one and a half teaspoons of ground ginger, and one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Now in a medium bowl, cream together the dry butterscotch pudding mix, butter, and brown sugar until smooth. Stir in the egg. Combine the flour, baking soda, ginger, and cinnamon, and stir into the pudding mixture. Cover in chilled dough until firm, about one hour. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Grease baking sheets on a floured board. Roll dough out to about an eighth of an inch thickness and cut into man shapes using a cookie cutter. Place cookies two inches apart on the prepared baking sheets. Bake for 10 to 12 minutes in the preheated oven until cookies are golden at the edges. Cool on wire racks. And my last and final cookie recipe for this year's Christmas cookie and Christmas dessert show is my favorite chocolate white chocolate chip cookies. So here is Chef Alex's chocolate white chocolate chip cookies. You'll need one cup of butter softened, two cups of sugar, which is white sugar, two eggs, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, two cups of all-purpose flour, three-fourths of a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, a half teaspoon of salt, and one and two-thirds of a cup of white chocolate chips. Preheat your oven to 350. In a large bowl, cream together the butter and sugar until smooth. Beat in the eggs one at a time, then stir in the vanilla. Combine the flour, cocoa, baking soda, and salt, and stir into the cream mixture. Fold in the white chocolate chips. Drop by rounded teaspoonfuls onto ungreased cookie sheets. Bake for 8 to 10 minutes in a preheated oven until cookies are set. Allow cookies to cool on a baking sheet for 5 minutes before removing to a wire rack to cool completely. Alright? Now, before I move on to my regular Christmas dessert recipes, I would like to give you guys a few notes on making Christmas cookies. Now, these notes are that if you, let's say for example, you're using my, one of my recipes that call for butter, but you don't have any butter in your kitchen. Well, you can actually substitute butter for shortening. I would personally recommend using Sco butter flavored shortening instead of the vegetable shortening. But have no fear, if you have no butter, don't rush to the store, because you don't have to, unless you really are dead set on using butter. You can use Crisco buttered flavor shortening, or even the vegetable shortening if you wanted to. But be aware, if you use the vegetable flavor shortening, you're not going to get that buttered flavor. You're going to get the buttered flavor with the Crisco buttered flavored shortening. Alright? So I just wanted to make you guys aware. So if you were going to substitute the butter for buttery flavored shortening, use the exact same amount as you would of the butter. Alright? So that is all of my cookie recipes. Now, let's get into the actual Christmas dessert recipes that I'm going to share with you. And I'll start with my homemade red velvet cake. This is a popular recipe that I've given out on primetime baking several times. And I'll give it out again. Chef Alex's red velvet cake. Ingredients. One stick of butter softened. Two and a half cups of sugar. Two eggs. Two ounces of red food coloring. That's a whole bottle, and I suggest using one full bottle and a half of a bottle for that bloody red Christmas color that's very pretty. 
two tablespoons of cocoa powder, a cup of buttermilk, two and a quarter cups of cake flour, a teaspoon of vanilla, and a teaspoon of baking soda. Directions. Cream together the butter and sugar. Add eggs one at a time. Beat well after each addition. In another bowl, mix together the red food coloring and cocoa to form a paste. Add this creamed mixture. On low speed, add buttermilk and flour alternately, beginning and ending with flour. Mix well. Do not overbeat. Add vanilla and stir in the vanilla. Blend in baking soda. Grease your cake pans. Place batter evenly into greased cake pans. Bake at 350 for 25 to 30 minutes and cool. Now, for the center and middle of the cake, you're going to make a no-bake cheesecake. And that calls for 16 ounces of cream cheese, which is two packages, three cups of sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla, and lemon juice. And they're going to mix all of that together. Cool the red velvet cakes as soon as they come out of the oven. My suggestion is to sit them on the table and then put them in the fridge. Now, this no-bake cheesecake is for layer cakes. Now, once completely cool, it has to be cold. Place the cheesecake filling into the center of the cake. Place the top layer over the cake. Place into the fridge and let the cheesecake part harden for two hours. Then take out of the refrigerator and frost with cream cheese buttercream. Use any red velvet crumbs for garnish or you could also use cherries. Now the cream cheese buttercream has 8 ounces of cream cheese, a half cup of butter softened, 1 teaspoon of lemon juice or extract, a teaspoon of vanilla, 4 cups of powdered sugar, and a small teaspoon of milk. Cream the butter and sugar for 3 minutes. Add the extracts. Add the powdered sugar 2 cups at a time. Add a small amount of milk. And frost the cake as any way you want. As any pretty way you want. Alright, my next recipe is another red velvet recipe. Chef Alex's Red Velvet Whoopie Pies. Now, for the whoopie pies, you're going to need 3 cups of all-purpose flour, a third of a cup of cocoa powder, one teaspoon of baking powder, a half teaspoon of baking soda, a half teaspoon of salt, a half cup of unsalted butter at room temperature, a half cup of vegetable shortening, a half cup of light brown sugar, one cup of granulated sugar, two eggs, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and three teaspoons of red food coloring, and one cup of buttermilk. For the cream cheese filling, you'll need four ounces of cream cheese at room temperature, four tablespoons of unsalted butter at room temperature, three and a half cups of powdered sugar, and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Directions. Position a rack in the center of the oven and preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Line two baking sheets with parchment paper and set aside. Whisk together the flour, cocoa powder, baking powder, baking soda, and salt in a medium bowl and set aside. In the bowl of a stand mixer with a paddle attachment, beat together the butter, shortening, and bowl sugars on low speed until just combined. Increase the speed to medium and beat until fluffy and smooth, about five minutes. Add the eggs one at a time, beating well after each addition. Add the vanilla and the red food coloring and beat until just blended. Add half of the flour mixture and half of the buttermilk to the batter and beat on low until just incorporated. Scrape down the sides of the bowl. Add the remaining flour mixture and remaining half cup of buttermilk and beat until completely combined. Using a spoon or a medium cookie scoop, which is what I use, drop a tablespoon of batter onto one of the prepared baking sheets and repeat, spacing them at least two inches apart. Bake one sheet at a time for about 10 minutes each or until the cakes spring back when pressed gently. 
remove the baking sheet from the oven, and let the cakes cool on the sheet for about 5 minutes before transferring them to a rack to cool completely. While the cakes are cool, prepare the filling. In the bowl of a stand mixer, beat together the cream cheese and butter at medium speed. Add the sugar and beat on low speed until combined. Add the vanilla and increase the speed to medium high. Beat until creamy and smooth about 4 minutes. To assemble, spread the filling onto the flat side of one cake using a knife or spoon. Or you could also use a um, pastry bag as well. And then of course top it with another cake flat side down and repeat. Alright, my next recipe is a delicious recipe. Now I actually made this recipe this week as I wanted to test it out and see how it comes out for Christmas because I had leftover Ghirardelli white chocolate and I had some candy cane. So I made this recipe. It's great and I look forward to making it for Christmas and I hope you my listeners will make this recipe for Christmas at your house as well. Chef Alex's Peppermint White Chocolate Cream Pie. You will need about a half cup of white chocolate chips, melted, three tablespoons of heavy cream, one eight ounce package of cream cheese softened, two thirds of a cup of powdered sugar, one cup of whipped cream or Cool Whip. You will need a nine inch Oreo pie crust and one ounce square of white chocolate melted or you could use some more white chocolate chips and you will also need candy canes. I use the miniature candy canes. I take them out of the package and I put them into the uh, mixer with the batter in it and that broke up the candy canes for me but they do need to be broken up. So if you're going to be mixing this by hand you got to break them up with a rolling pin otherwise you can just throw the miniature candy canes into the stand mixer. Microwave the the white chocolate and the three tablespoons of cream in a large microwave safe bowl on high one and a half to two minutes or until chocolate is almost melted, stirring halfway through the heating time. Stir until the white chocolate is melted and mixture is smooth. Beat in the softened cream cheese and powdered sugar. Gently fold in the whipped cream until no streaks remain. Spoon into your crust and decorate with your remaining white chocolate and peppermint. Now you should also, like I said earlier, throw the peppermint in when you are mixing everything together. My next recipe and my final recipe for this year's show is Chef Alex's Peppermint White Chocolate Bark. 16 ounces of white chocolate bark or candy melts. Two cups of soft peppermints. Place peppermints in a heavy duty plastic bag such as a freezer bag. Using a meat mallet or a clean hammer, crush peppermints leaving some large pieces. Line a large baking sheet with parchment paper. Melt chocolate according to package directions. Stir in two of a cup of the crushed peppermints. So easily on parchment, sprinkling or peppermint pieces 